means you have to break down the complex task into small functionalities and then you need to uh, integrate them within the main application. So you can see an example which is given here. Write a function for binary search in Python. So this will generate the code, means when you give this prompt to the model, the model will be able to generate a code for that. So suppose if you are using Open AI Studio, you can try out that directly in the Open AI Playground. Suppose I go to the Playground. And here, you can ask, write code for binary search. Suppose if I give a prompt like this, you can see this directly implementing the complete code. I mean, so writing the function and the code for invoking that function, everything is provided. You can even write unit test cases for that. Create five unit test for it. So you can see it also generates the unit testing for uh, the binary search function. Right. So that means it is not only generating the code and but also writing unit test for that. It is also possible to convert the code from one language to another language. For example, you have a Python code. But you are a .NET developer and you want to try that features and functionalities in your .NET application. So what But you have only Python code ready with you? Maybe you have downloaded some internet. What you can do, you can tell the model, OK, I have this Python code. Can you convert this code into uh, C sharp? Then it will simply convert that code into the specific language which you have requested. Similarly, if you if you are not aware about uh, the code logic, suppose you have downloaded some code from Internet, but you are not able to understand how it works. No problem. You can ask the AI model to explain how the code is working. So suppose I'm going to take this example. So this is a prompt that contains the code. So I can tell this I'm just giving this code and I'm saying convert the following code to C sharp and then I'm providing this Python function. You can see it is simply creating the C sharp code. So this is a C sharp code for the above mentioned function. So that means converting from one language to another language is possible. But again, we I'm saying this is an AI generated code. We have to use it very cautiously because whether this code is right. 100% is right or not, we cannot predict. Okay. And it is also possible to explain the code. Suppose if I don't know a particular piece of code and I want my model to explain about that. So, what we can do, I'll take this code and I can tell this model. OK, this is a function I can understand, but can you explain this code, what it is doing? So 
So this is a, a function that takes two numbers and performs some operation. So you can see the step by step instruction how this function is working. Okay. So I don't know which language it is, but yes, it is able to explain that code. It is also possible to complete the partial code. It means if you have written some part of the code, it will be able to complete the remaining code. So you just here you can see complete the following function and then we can say calculate the average of the numbers in an array, but only if they are even and then you can say DEF, so which means it is going to write a Python function. So if you provide this as a prompt, it is going to use Python code because here you have used DEF. DEF is usually used for defining a Python function. And above in the comment, you have mentioned that you are supposed to calculate the average of the numbers in an array if they are even. Unit test generations. I have already showed an example how the unit test can be generated. So you can specify the function and provide in the prompt that you want to generate unit test for the above mentioned function. So in the right side, you will be able to see that it is creating a set of unit test cases. Fix the bugs in your code. So how the bug fixing is uh, working? So it will try to identify what the function is doing from the function code as well as from the comments which is given. And then it will try to uh, revise the code or try to fix the code and in inside that, uh, suppose if you are using some code assisting tools like a GitHub Copilot, it will give you suggestions, which is the corrected code or which is the completed code. And if you if you are OK, you can accept that changes. So if you accept that changes, it will be updated inside your code. So if you feel your code is not working because of some logical mistake or syntactical mistakes, both you can correct using this bug fixing feature of the OpenAI models. And performance optimization also you can do with the code generation capability. So how? Because if suppose if you are writing a code uh, to connect to the database and read something, but the code is a 15 line of code, 10, 15 line of code you are written. But there may be best op options available which can complete this operation just in two lines or three lines. So instead of writing 10, 15 lines of code with the arrays and loops and other things, you can tell the model to optimize the code so that it will rewrite the code in a simplest way. So which is performance optimized. So now if you want to see this in action, we can go to our Visual Studio code. So here you can see this is Visual Studio code. Inside this Visual Studio code, we can generate the code from comments. So for that, because here I'm using a code generation tool, so I don't have GitHub Copilot. I'm using the Amazon Q for the code generation. So you can specify the comment. Create a uh, Flask uh, application. 
with roots configured through home page and the about page. So you can see it is this code assisting tool is generating the code for you. Right. So that means here you can see it is generating the complete code that is required for creating a Flask application. You can see according to my command, create a Flask application, Python Flask application to uh, with the root configured for home page and about page. Here you can see for home page and about page, it is uh, writing the roots and you can uh, see the main function or the uh, startup point is also configured so here this way it generates the code from the comments so you, what you have to implement you just need to specify in the comment suppose if you have a javascript file like uh, app.js so in case of javascript also you can do like, like uh, create a, create an express js web app with the roots in the home page and about You can see it is creating the code for the application. So I, we cannot expect that it is. It will do all things uh, correctly. So I don't know. It's not generating, it's generated. So we have to make changes in the prompt. Create an express and to create. So you can see this is the express application. You can see it is uh, importing this express, then creating an express app, and then config importing the uh, routes for home and about. So it assumes that we have a routes configured in the routes file. So inside of the routes folder, there is a home and the about files. And from there, we are importing the home and about routes and then configuring the static page routing, and then configure in the middlewares for the Express application. And this is for starting the Express application. So this is uh, creating or generating the code that is required for uh, building an Express application. So, but yes, uh, all the lines of code may not be uh, required or it may not be an efficient code, we have to manually review it. That is very, very important. So do not blindly 
uh, use this code as it is. You have to always uh, revise or review the code to understand is there any issues within this code. So not only uh, Python and uh, Node.js, even C Sharp or other languages also you can try, but I'm not going into that. So this is how the code generation works. From the comments, we can generate the code. Later, we have discussed about fixing the bug in the code. Suppose that this is a sample code and I want to try, I want to use this. So this is my function. So what I can do, I'll take a copy of this, put it into my Python file. So here you can see it is giving error in, there is a, some typo error mm -hmm. also there. So anyway, so this is my code. And suppose if I have to fix the bug in this code, I can make a request to the open AI models, uh, GPT models to fix the code. But currently, instead of doing that, I'm going to use the code assisting tool. So I said in, in my system, I have the Amazon Q installed, or you can use GitHub Copilot from Microsoft or tab name like this. There are different products available. So what I'm going to do, I'll select my code and right click. And when I go to this Amazon Q, send it to Amazon Q, you can see an option for explaining this code, refactoring this code, fixing the code, optimizing the code, and send it to prompt. And you can ask whatever you want. Suppose if I have to fix the bug, then I can select this option. You can see it is connecting to the Amazon Q service. So here you can see the issue with here you can see the response. The issue with the provided code is in the rerun average line. It should be return average instead. Here is the corrected code. So you can see that code. And here, if you have selected this function, you can insert in this position. So you can see where this function is appearing or cursor is appearing in that position. It is inserting this code, right? So, so this. So you can see uh, where the cursor is there in that place. You will be able to see this. Okay. And suppose if you are not aware what is this code doing, you can tell the agent to explain this code. So here there is option for explaining. So behind the scene, they are actually writing the prompt for doing this. So we are not writing the prompt. This tool, the Amazon Q tool is doing. Uh, but if you are using GitHub Copilot, GitHub Copilot will do it for you. But here, behind the scene, anyway, it is making a call to the uh, GPT models because it is used inside this uh, code assisting tool. So here you can see the explanation, what, what it is doing. So sure, let me explain with the selected code block. So this code I have selected and it is explaining. So this Python function named uh, calculate average is uh, that takes a list of Python, I'm sorry, list of numbers as an argument and return the average of those numbers. And here is a step-by-step -step explanation of the code. Okay, so that is what code explanation. So you can do it by using code explain.
Now, if you want to refactor this, you can just select an refactor. Means, if is there any better way to modify this code and write so that you can see? Right, so you can see we have a re refactored version of the calculate average function uh, that Python's built in sum and uh, len functions as well as the list comprehension. So here you can see it is using the simplest form of uh, the code. So I have I'm not making a request to the REST API directly, but yes, uh, if you are using the GitHub Copilot or Amazon Q kind of services, behind the scene they are executing the same feature and functionality. So that is all about the code generation feature of uh, the open AI models. So it is supports various languages. So you can write your code in uh, C sharp or Python or JavaScript or Java, any language you can use and ask the model. Suppose if you want to generate the code or optimize the code or even bug fixing you can you want to do or generating the unit test cases, all you can do using this GPT models. So, but developers may not directly use uh, those endpoints. They will be using this kind of tools. So this Amazon Q is actually a free tool, but GitHub Copilot is a paid tool. So that's the end of the fourth module. It's a very simple module. And I can share you the exercises link also. If you if somebody wants to try it later, I can share you the link for it. Just a minute. Okay. So I'm sharing the GitHub link for this labs. So inside of this repository, you will find the sample code for uh, using the generative AI uh, services. It's uh, it contains all the labs required for all the six modules. If you have to execute this, then you can go to this uh, lab and you can go to the instruction section. Inside of the instructions, you can go to the exercises and here you will see the labs for that. So here is the code generations example. So here you will see the step by step instruction. So we are not going to execute this code. Uh, so you can see that they have provided, provided the C sharp as well as Python example. So if you are from the Python background, you can try out the Python uh, sample code, or you can use the C sharp. C sharp is better for uh, others. If you are not familiar with 
uh, Python, then I recommend using C sharp because that is very easy. So not this is not only containing the code generation, even prompt engineering lab is also there. The natural language uh, code is also there. So you can see the instructions for all the labs are there. And if you see in some point, you may have to uh, add some code. So for updating this code, you have to go to the lab file section. So here is a lab files. Inside this lab files, you will be able to. Uh, inside this lab files, you will be able to see the code and for each module. So here it is for prompt engineering. You can see the C sharp and Python sample code. And for code generation, you'll be able to see the C sharp and Python code. So that instruction, what to update in this code, that is the instruction which you can see uh, in the instructions folder and lab files folder contains the um, what to say uh, sample code in C sharp and Python. So I recommend all of you to try out this labs or exercises. Now we are moving to the next module. In this next module, we are trying to understand the image generation capability of OpenAI model, that is DAL-E. So this module is talking about the DAL-E uh, model, which is used to generate the images with the Azure Open AI. So here we will see how to use DAL-E in our uh, Open AI Studio and how to invoke the DAL E REST APIs. And also, we will see how to use the SDK for invoking the DAL E operations. So, what is DAL E? So, DAL E is an image generation model. So, this uh, is typically used to generate realistic images. So realistic in the sense, you will see the images which is generated, which are, which it looks very real. This DAL-E model is available with open AI, but the DAL-E model, which is available in OpenAI, provides three operations. That is image generation, image updation, means image editing, and also the variation generation. So if you first look into the OpenAI model, So this is the official open AI model, not the Azure open AI, the traditional open AI model. If you go to the DAL-E, so here you can see it is providing DAL-E3 and DAL-E2. So this uh, is the DAL-E3 is the latest DAL-E model. And if you want to know the uh, uh, functionalities that it provides, you can go to the API reference. And here you will see the image generations. 
So here you can see we can generate the image using by making an API request. So in if you're directly making a request to the open AI, you need to use this open AI endpoint. But in our case, we are generating the images using the Azure Open AI. So the endpoint will be different. So if you see here, we also have an option for editing the image. So images slash edits is the URL for image editing. And uh, for creating the images, it is images slash generations. So that means we can even create the image and edit the image. And here, the third operation, which is create an image variation. So create a variation of a given image. Suppose if you are providing an image, it can generate a variation of that image. Suppose if, uh, something you provide, it will create something similar to that in a different angle, different position, different style. So it will be able to generate uh, the image variation. But you can see in open AI, we have different uh, functionalities for that, but that, that means we can do image creation, that is image generation, image editing, and image variation. But when it comes to the open AI, there are there is only one option, which is uh, image generation. Suppose if you go to Azure Open AI LE. So OpenAI's DAL-E is you to generate the images based on the given prompt. So that means you will be able to generate the image. Yeah, so if you see the uh, DAL E model, which is available in uh, Azure Open AI, is currently supporting only the image generation. There is no image editing and uh, uh, variation generation. And the URL of URL of uh, the DAL E model for the image generation is something like this. You have to specify your domain. Okay. After that, your deployment name and slash images slash generation. So that means you have to specify your deployment name here for invoking the Azure Open AI DAL E model. But in the uh, normal Open AI services, the traditional Open AI services, there is no deployment name because in Azure Open AI, before consuming, we have to deploy the model, right? But here uh, in OpenAI, it's not required. So after this endpoint, you have to specify your deployment name also. So let's see how it works. For that, I'm taking you to the DAL E playground. So here you can see the deployment is DAL E3. Because if you go to the deployment section, there is a, a deployment which is automatically created for the DAL E3 version. Okay, so that means I, I didn't create this. This is automatically created when I open the DAL E playground. And uh, the deployment name is DAL E3, and, but the model name contains hyphen. Okay, so that you have to understand. So here, I have selected this model which I have deployed, and here I can provide the description.
So this is my prompt. I have just mentioned create an image of a sh uh, ship in the sea, scary thunderstorms and lightning, and uh, generate a realistic image. So you can see this is the image which is generated. Right? So this looks like a, a realistic image, but if you want, you can generate different uh, styles, uh, st different uh, image styles. Suppose instead of that, create a I'm just saying generate a cartoon image for this. So let's see the same theme, how it will generate as a cartoon. Okay, so you can see this is the one which is generated. Okay, so you can see it is in a different style. Let's try another one, or maybe there is. Daso is believes correct, right? Yeah, let's try. Yep. So we, this is the Picasso style. So the same theme, same image, but in three different uh, styles. So one is a realistic image, second is a cartoon type, third one is a Picasso style. So like this, you can generate the images in various styles. Okay. This is another image which I'm generating. An image of a lion and tiger running a race. So this is again looks like a realistic image, right? So, so this is what the capability of the DAL E model, which is capable to generate different uh, styles of images. So this feature is now integrated in different uh, co-pilot. So if you go to the Bing co-pilot or the browser-based co-pilot, suppose if you go to Bing, so this is the Bing co-pilot. So here also you can use generate an image of a lion and a tiger fighting. So when you generate this image, it will also check the text that you are providing. Suppose if it is uh, 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 containing some text which is uh, comes under uh, uh, self-harm, sex, violence categories, then it will not allow to generate that images. So here you can see, this is four variations it generated, right? So you can see that. Okay, so this is one. So you can see all the four images are same, but uh, the style, sorry, the uh, angle position all is different right so that is what the variations feature and you can see here it is clearly mentioned this is using dal e powered by dal e so if you want you can specify the 
slow. Let's see whether it is able to generate it. The browser has and okay, it's now. Okay, so this is what the image which is generated. So you can see it is very uh, realistic uh, image, but understand it uh, uses the content moderation feature. So it uh, Suppose in, in your prompt, if you specify something which is not acceptable, which is that will be moderated, you can use. Okay, I can move it like this. So here, suppose I'm saying draw an image of a. Uh, Baby, uh, using knife to cut the head of um, ant. So you can see it is not allowing to generate such images because. It moderate the content. You can see this contains some violence text uh, inside it. So it uh, moderate it. It does not allow us to generate such uh, kind of images. So always it uses because of the responsible AI and the uh, content moderation. It will always generate uh, always moderate the text before it execute. Whether it is uh, DAL E or uh, GPT or any kind of thing. So if you for this image generations, Copilot is using which one? The DAL E model. But if you ask to generate some text, maybe suppose if you want to write some story, then behind the scene it will be using which one? The GPT models. So Copilot is a tool that uses multiple models behind the scene. So for image generations, it uses it uses the uh, what to say DAL E, and for text processing, it will be using the GPT models. Suppose if I'm downloading this image. And here inside this beam. So here you can see we can upload the image as an input. So because this is a this is using GPT-4, which allows uh, image as an input. So you can upload image because that's why it is called a multi-model model. Identify the uh, animals in this image. Let's see whether it is possible. Uh, you can see the animals in the image are a lion and a tiger. The image shows a lion and tiger mid-air appearing to be engaged in a combat or play. So we can see. So we can upload an image and give a prompt, right? So this is using a text input plus image input. So that's why it is uh, called a multi-model model. That is GPT-4 uh, is a multi-model model type, right? So that is what you have to understand while learning the features of different 
models. So DAL E is simply for image generation. GPT 3.5 is text only model, and GPT 4 is capable to handle image as well as text inputs. But the output is always the text in case of GPT 4. So DAL E in the Azure Open AI Studio, we have just tried this feature. OK, so how to generate the images using the DAL E playground. Suppose if you want to invoke the REST APIs or you want to uh, make a request to the DAL E endpoint for building or for generating the images, you can specify the endpoint. So this is, I think, the quite old type. So in the new documentation, you can see what is the uh, uh, URL for the DAL E endpoint. It is containing the uh, deployment name as well. So I have showed you the documentation of uh, the DAL E. Open AI -E. REST API. Let's see what is a URL for it. So here you can see after the API's base URL, open API slash deployments slash the deployment name then slash images images slash generations so that means you have to specify the deployment name also in the url okay and then you can provide a uh, prompt so you can specify the prompt you can specify the size you can specify the number of images to generate so only one is supported means currently okay so but uh, later it may support multiple also so currently only one is supported and you can specify the uh, quality of the image and the image style okay so what are the styles supported natural and vivid so default is vivid right so this you can try suppose if you want to make a call using postman you can do that so i just go to Postman, I'll make a request to this. Let me take this as an example. So here we can make a request, but I have to put the API base URL. So let's take the API base URL, this one. Then the deployment name. So what is the deployment name that I can get from the Deployments list. So that is DAL E. This is the name of the deployment. Then images slash generations question mark API version equal to the what is a version? So versions value is it available here in the deployment. Yeah, this is the API version we can use. Okay. 
and then let's make a post request and in the request body we can specify the parameters suppose if i take an example of this we'll remove the comments Okay, so here, this is the structure, and now we have to make uh, the request, but for making the request, we have to use the API key. So for the API key, we have to specify, this is the header, API hyphen key. And what is the authentication key that we can get from here? I can put it here. Let's try to make the request. So this is going to return a URL of the generated image. So this is the URL which is written. We'll click. Let's see. Let's copy this URL. Okay, you can see this is the image which is generated, right? So you can access this image uh, for some days, means some duration. It's not permanent for some duration. I'm not sure about how many days it will be available. Okay, so this is going to generate and return the, yeah, so the URL stays active for 24 hours. Okay, so you can um, see the image which, which is generated is accessible using this URL. So this URL is accessible for 24 hours. So Within that time, you have to download that image or whatever you want to do with that, you have to do. Okay, otherwise this uh, link will be expired. Okay, so here you can see it uses the content filtering. You can say hate, there is a filtered severity level safe. Then self harm, it's a safe, sexual safe violence safe that means there is no uh, con uh, such kind of contents found in this data right? so that is so this is the prompt filtering so hate is safe profanity is uh, detected false self harm safe sexual uh, safe and violence safe that means it is uh filtering both the response content as well as the prompt content so whatever request you made your prompt is filtered 
also your response is also filtered. That's why I showed you in the co-pilot, whenever you try to generate an image that contains some kind of violent text, it does not allow you to generate that image because it's failed to uh, pass that filtering. Okay. So this is how we can use the REST API for DAL E endpoint. So same thing we can do with the SDK as well. That means if you are a C sharp developer, you can make a request to invoke the DAL E endpoint and generate an image. For that, you need to use the OpenAI client object, just we have saw in uh, GPT model, same way, and you have to create the image generations options and image generation options you have to specify there you can specify a prompt and also the size of the image so what is the size of the image you want to generate you can specify that as well as uh, the prompt so it will uh, return the response and that the response will contain a URL. So here you can uh, get that URL using response.data of zero dot URL. So you will get this URL and that URL is valid for 24 hours. So same thing can be done with Python as well. So you need to create an OpenAI instance called the OpenAI image create functionality. So openai.image.create and you specify the prompt size and the number of images. So this returns the response and the response will contain the URL. So that's the end of the DAL E module. So in this previous module, we have discussed about uh, the image generation capability of DAL E and how we can generate the images using Playground, using the REST API, and using the uh, C sharp or Python or some other languages using SDK. So I have showed you the different uh, styles of images that we can generate uh, using the DAL E and how the copilot is integrated with the DAL E for generating the images. Now we need to move to the final module and this module is very, very useful because so far we have discussed about the open AI models available in Azure. And we have seen that all these models are pre-trained with the data available on internet. So in internet, we have millions of data available and our models are pre-trained with this millions of data. But if you want to use these generative AI models in an organization and your organization wants these models to generate some organization specific data. In such cases, it will not be possible with the pre-trained models because consider uh, the example of the Apollo hospital I have mentioned. Suppose when we suppose if I have to know something about the Apollo hospital, yes, I can go to uh, open AI's model and ask, OK, where is Apollo hospital? It, will, it may be able to tell you where is because it's a very popular hospital. So when you ask the model, it may be able to tell you where it is located or which of the locations it is available. 
But if you go and ask, okay, maybe suppose if it is available in Mumbai and I'm saying, okay, in Mumbai, uh, which doctor is available in the ortho section in Apollo Hospital? So this is a specific question about the Mumbai branch and uh, about a specific department. So I'm asking in the Mumbai branch of Apollo Hospital, which doctor is available or which surgeon is available uh, for a particular department? So in such cases, your pre-trained models may not be able to answer correctly. So it may tell you, no, I'm not aware about or I'm not trained with the such data. Then how we can use this models in our organizations? There comes this module's importance use your own data with the open AI models. So that means if I want to build an AI service that uses our organization specific data or our domain specific data, then we can use this feature. Technically, we call it as RAG, that is Retrieval Augmented Generation, which helps to uh, generate the uh, organization or domain specific informations from the data that we provide. So let's see how it is. In this module, it's a very simple feature. Okay? So in this module, we will see how this uh, custom data we can integrate with our models and how to make a request using REST APIs for uh, getting the custom data and how to use the language specific SDKs to make the request. So consider that we are planning to use the GPT 3.5 model or GPT 4.0 model. So GPT-4 or GPT-3.5, whatever model we are using, they are pre-trained, which means these models are trained with the millions of data available in the internet, but it may not be a recent data. Suppose if you consider the GPT-3.5, it is trained with the data available in the internet till September 2022 or uh, January 2023. But if you ask something about uh, the new incidents, new informations, which has happened after that particular date, it may not be able to tell you. For example, if you ask about the election which has happened in India uh, this month, it may not be able to answer correctly because it is not aware that this incident has happened. So, the, the, the solution for this, or the how we can resolve these problems, suppose an organization wants to use the organization-specific data because we have to generate our responses out of that, okay, so we have some organization specific information. From that, we have to generate the answers. Or if the model is using the pre-trained data only, it may not be able to generate the uh, correct results uh, for the user queries. So such cases, what we can do, so there are multiple approaches. So one approach is fine tuning. So what is fine tuning? So fine tuning means you take a base model, you take a base model, and then you train that model, retrain that model with the latest data which is available. Suppose if I have uh, the recent data which is in, there in my hand. I can retrain the model with the data available in my hand. 
But the problem with this fine tuning is, first of all, it will require heavy compute. Because you know, training the models require higher capacity machines. Means if you are using the cloud virtual machines, you may require GPU enabled machines because training the models is not so uh, easy or not so simple. So we need a heavy compute machines for training the models. And it is a time consuming process because uh, uh, retraining the model with the data which is available will take time, maybe days or months, depends on the data size. Third problem is, suppose if the organization data is keep changing, if the data is keep updating, retraining this model again and again will be difficult because yes, we can train the model or we can retrain the model one time. But if the organization data is keep changing, it will be very, very difficult for us to retrain the model every time. So it is very expensive and time consuming process. So nowadays the organizations don't go with that approach. Means fine tuning is a good approach if you have time and compute available. But for most of the organizations that is not a feasible uh, method. So then what is the next solution? So instead of retraining the model, we will attach the grounding content for uh, the model. So while making a request, we will be providing the grounding content. So hope you remember that I told about the grounding content in the prompt engineering module. So I said you can provide a grounding content and ask questions based on that grounding content. So how it works, whenever you makes a request to the model, model is not using it's a pre-trained memory. Instead, it is going to use a data source, maybe a SQL database, Cosmos DB database, or some other kind of data source. It's called a vector storages. So it use the vector storages to uh, generate the response because the data, the relevant data will be coming from the vector storage. So how it works, I'll explain. Okay. This is very complicated picture. Okay, so this is a very simple and easy to understand. Yeah. So if you consider this image, you can see here. In the bottom, you can see there are a lot of document that is original content. OK, so this may be uh, documents in PDF or Word file or Excel format that contains the organization's specific information. OK, so that means, for example, you can consider some PDF documents that contains the complete information about the organization. So what we can do first is we have to convert this PDF documents or Word documents, whatever is the text content. I can simply say it's a text content. So these text contents or documents, we can convert into embeddings and store into the vector storage. So we 
store the actual content that is text content as well as it's a numeric conversion so both we will store inside the vector database so vector database can be mongodb or sql database postgresql or elastic search there are different uh, vector storage types or uh, pine cone uh, like this the, there are different vector databases available so we can convert this text content into numeric format and then store inside the vector database so that means the vector format also we are storing and also the text format means both we are storing inside this it is not going to store everything as a single entry instead of that it divide that data into chunks so different the pieces it will create the data or it will convert the data into different uh, chunks and then will be storing inside that so here this also will show this the raw images will be stored into the data set as document chunks and then we will execute an embedding sorry we will execute an indexing process so we are storing the data in an embedded format means uh, vector format and then we will index the data and whenever the user makes a request whenever the user makes a prompt the usually the large language models like open ai it is using its pre trained knowledge to generate the answer but this time what happens whenever we make a request the request will be going to the database and perform a similarity search okay it uh, performs a similarity search and which of the data is matching with this prompt it uh, returns all this information and provide this as a grounding content to the model so now the model is going to generate your response based on that so here you can see whenever the client makes a question what the what happens it to first to do a semantic search you can see it is making a search in the vector database and return the contextual data which means the matching data which of the uh, informations are matching to the query for example if i am asking okay uh, in mumbai branch of the apollo hospital which doctor is available in ortho section so it will search for mumbai branch it will search for apollo it will search for uh, ortho section so it will do a similarity search inside the vector database and which of the documents or which of the chunks or which of the pieces of data is talking about the mumbai branch apollo hospital and the ortho and the doctor names so it will get all the matching documents so which of the matching documents are available it uh, return as a contextual data and that contextual data is sent it along with the prompt that means when we send the question it's not only sending the question now now the uh, match matching data which is uh, retrieved from the vector database is also sent along with the prompt and now the llm has the prompt as well as the grounding content so it is going to use the grounding content for generating the response okay this is what it does so if i go to okay so here you can see whenever the user makes a query this it the embeddings model which is storing the uh, data in the form of vector inside the vector storage will do a similarity search and the relevant context data is coming from the vector database and that matching documents combined with the query so combine prompt with the relevant context that means the re relevant context data is used as the grounding content and then send it to the llm and the llm that is your gpt model is going to generate the response using this context data okay so this is how it works 
so if you are trying to build everything manually it will take a lot of time and effort because you have to convert your data into vector format and store inside a vector database like uh, azure ai search or uh, cosmos db or mongodb or postgresql or elastic search there are different ways we can store that vector data so we need to first convert our data into uh, vector format and store inside the uh, vector database and then whenever the user makes a query it will retrieve the matching documents from that vector storage and use it as a grounding content okay so that is what we do so in this module we are going to discuss about that Here you can see we can set up the data source. That means if you want to do this in Azure OpenAI, uh, with the help of code, you can manually do all these steps. But if you are using the Azure OpenAI Studio, it is very, very easy to configure. So in OpenAI Studio, what you need to do is you just need to specify the custom data source and you just need to uh, write a prompt for uh, generating the responses. I'll show you how it is. So for that, I have to have some sample data. So what I'm going to do from this, I'm just downloading this document. So here, inside this uh, repository, I have some sample document. So here, data. So here you can see there are some PDF documents which talks about the Margis Travel. So Margis Travel is a travel agency. So they are operating in different countries. So they do things uh, like uh, flight booking, uh, accommodation, visa, currency exchange. There are different uh, things they will do and they have tie up with different hotels in different uh, countries and different cities. For example, if in New York, so they know which of the locations are very, uh, what, uh, very good for tourists and also they are providing some hotels. So they provide accommodation in New York for different hotels. Like uh, there are three hotels named, so they, which they have tie up. So similarly in uh, uh, Dubai, if you say they have a description about Dubai and also they, which of the hotels in Dubai is having tie up with Margis travels. Like this, different uh, cities, you can see London, okay. You can see and also the las vegas all you can see so now the question suppose if i go to the chat playground so here in the chat playground i'm setting the default message so look at this, what, what happens if I ask uh, about some hotels in New York? So I want to travel to New York. Where can I stay? So this is the question I have. So now you can see it is providing lots of hotel name, but these hotels are not part of our Margis uh, travel. So you can see Manhattan, Brooklyn, uh, Queens, uh, Staten Island. There are some hotels names they have provided, but if you see 
Margis Travel is not providing this hotel. I think uh, only Manhattan is there and the Grand Central and Parks. OK, so if you see this list which is generated or the response which is generated here is not matching or not specific to the Margis Travels data. So what what is the problem here? Or if I go and ask where I can stay in Dubai, so it'll, they will give you a lot of hotels names in Dubai, but they don't provide uh, discounts to the customers coming through Margis Travel because Margis Travel has a tie up with the different hotels in different cities. So when I ask the model, OK, so this is assume that this this is a chat agent uh, in the Margis website. So Margis Travel website. So if I'm asking the chat assistant, OK, I want to travel to New York, which of the hotels I can use or which of the hotels I can get the accommodation. So instead of giving the answers from the pre-trained knowledge, it has to use that PDF document. So it has to go to this PDF document and identify which of the hotels they are offering and provide only this information, right? So how to do that? So for that, what we have to do first, we need to upload this documents into a blob storage. I think I already have uploaded somewhere. Let me verify. So I'm creating a folder called Margis data. And inside this Margis data folder. I'm going to upload these. Documents, so I'll just go here. So these are the PDF documents I have. I'm just uploading all these PDF documents here. You can see. So now. My PDF documents that contains information about Margis travel is in the blob storage. Now I can go back to my chat. Playground and here is an option for adding your own data, right? So in the chat playground setup section, you can see add your data option and clicking on this add a data source and selecting a, a blob storage because I have my files already uploaded in the blob storage. So I can select this blob storage selected and which is the blob storage service that is this one and inside of which container it is in the Margis data container. So inside this Margis data container, I have the PDF documents. But the problem is it the LLM that is GPT cannot directly read from. PDF documents. It can read from a vector database only. So what it has to do, it needs to convert this data into a vector format and store somewhere. OK, we can use MongoDB or some other kind of uh, vector storages, but one of the easiest solution is Azure AI search because Azure AI search is a data mining service that can extract the text informations from. PDF and convert them into embeddings format and store as an index vector index. OK, so that vector index will work as the database. So I don't have any uh, search service here, so I'm going to create a new search service. So let me create a search service here. So synoptics and search. And I'm going to create this in where I have this data created, Sweden Center. 
Sweden Central and I'm selecting the pricing tier as basic. So I'm creating an AI search service. Okay, let's wait for this service to create. OK, the search service is created. Now if I go back to the chat playground and here I'll refresh. See here now it is listing the search service which I have created. And since I don't have any search index ready, so I will create a new one which is Marquis index. So because this contains the Marquis index and also here I can schedule the indexing. Suppose the indexer needs to execute only once because if my PDF data is keep updating, then I can do it in a scheduled manner like hourly or daily format. But if it is just a one time indexing, then I can select the once. Okay, so I'll select once only for simplicity and I'll go next. Here, search type is keyword. I'll leave this as it is. Then chunking will be done, and the chunk size is 1024. I said if it, if the document size is very large, then it will be dividing into chunks, means piece of documents. That is 1024 is the document size. I'm going to authenticate with the API key. Yes, I'm going to save this. So now you can see the indexing is going to happen here. Okay. That means it is extracting the PDF data and converting into vector format and store inside of the index. Indexing is not yet started. Yes, there are seven documents and it is going to process one by one document. OK, so here you can see. The index is created and you can see. Uh, the, the data source is configured. Now what happens if I make the same question again? Will it give the answers from the pre trained knowledge or will it give the answer from the Margis document? Let's see. 
so I want to travel to New York. It, where I can, I can stay in New York. This is my question. Now you can see it is providing three options like a Manhattan, Grand Central, and the Park Hotel. And you can also see this is coming from which PDF? The New York brochure.pdf. And this is all about Margis website. You can see to book your trip to New York, you can visit Margis travel website. So that means now the data is not generated from the pre-trained knowledge. It is coming from the document which is uploaded. So you can see only these three hotels names are coming, right? And also this is also coming as the content. So what happened? Why it is not showing the information about Dubai or the uh, Las Vegas or London because when it performs a similarity search in the database, it identifies only one document is matching with that information, like in New York, because only this document is talking about New York and the hotels which is available there. So it identifies that this is the matching document. Okay. Let's try a different one. I want to do a trip to London and Dubai. Suggest some good hotels where I can sleep. So now I specified London and Dubai. Let's see what happens. See, it is using two documents as the grounding content because when it does the similarity search, it is identifying the, there is something we have asked about London and also we have asked something about Dubai, right? So it provides the information from both and you can see it is giving these documents names as giving as the references. Right? So that is what uh, using custom data as the grounding content. So how it works, I have clearly mentioned. So whenever you perform the uh, or whenever you configure the custom data, it's called a retrieval augmented generation. So what it does, it uses the custom data which is stored in the vector databases. And use it as a grounding content, right? So okay, this is how it, it was working. Now, if you look at this picture, you can see. So whenever we make a request, that is a question, it first to go use the embeddings and make a search inside the vector database because vector database already contains the vector based data. So which of the matching documents are found, it comes here as a relevant chunks and that will be combined with the query. So the query is the prompt. Prompt and the relevant chunks will be combined. So re relevant chunks will be used as the context data or grounding content and that will go to the completion endpoint. That is your uh, uh, OpenAI's chat completion endpoint so that it will understand. OK, I have to generate the answers from these chunks. So the response is generated. OK, so this is one of the uh, uh, most commonly used approach for uh, generating organization specific uh, AI application or organization specific data if we have to generate using generative AI 
models. <clears throat> So this is I have showed you how to connect your data. And if you want to make a REST API request that uh, connect to the Azure Cognitive Search, so you need to include an additional parameter in the request body saying data sources equal to an array of configuration, like a type is equal to Azure Cognitive Search, parameters equal to the search configuration, the search endpoint, search key, and the search index name you have to specify. So that means whenever the user makes a request, you also need to provide the data source because this time our data is not generated from the pre-trained memory. It has to come from this data source. Okay, So this is the URL for making requests. You can see endpoint.openai.com slash openai slash deployment slash deployment name slash extensions slash chat slash completion. So we are not using the chat completion endpoint. It's extensions slash chat slash completion, which means this will take an additional parameter as a in the request body. So similarly, whenever we consume it from C sharp, we have to create a uh, data configuration parameter. You can see Azure Cognitive Search Chat Extension Configuration, and then you have to specify the search service uh, endpoint key and uh, the index name. So this Azure Cognitive Search Chat Extension Configuration object will be passed as an additional parameter here. You can see whenever we make a chat request, along with the messages, tokens, temperature and deployment name, we also need to pass Azure extension options equal to new Azure chat extension options, and then extensions equal to our object, whatever is the cognitive search chat extension object that will be passed, which means whenever we provide a prompt like this, I want to go to New York, where should I stay? So this prompt answer will be generated from this data source. Same thing can be done with Python. So that means inside this, you need to create a dictionary of data sources. Inside this data sources object, you need to specify the type as cognitive search, then specify the search endpoint, search key, and index name. And while making this chat completions request, you need to specify an extra body parameter. So extra body equal to that extension object configuration you have to specify. So that's it in this module. And that's the end of our session also. So in this module, we have seen how to customize the generative AI models to generate organization specific data with the help of RAG, that is a retrieval augmented generation, which allows us to configure custom data as the data source or as a grounding content for our completions. So that's it uh, from my side. And that's the end of this session. So let me check any questions. So the DAL E images, which is the DAL E images which are generated, is not copyright protected. You can use it. That's why we are using this models for generating our own images. Okay, so the chunk size means what should be the token size, I mean 1024 tokens per document. That is what. So that means one chunk means one document you can consider that one document will have 1024 tokens inside it. So like this. So what should be the document size we need while customizing or while configuring the uh, 
for while generating the vector data. So each document can have a size of 1024 tokens. So one token means three to four characters or four to five characters max. That way. So that's it from my side. Now, if you have any questions, you can post your questions. Okay, Siddhartha has a question. How much, how much data can be uploaded? So you can have any amount of data stored there, but uh, when you use the uh, OpenAI Studio and then uploading very large documents, there may be a timeout issue come because uh, it, it depends on, is this a web application? But there is an option using LangChain, you can create your own custom application. You can manually vectorize and store into the databases. Suppose if you are using MongoDB or Azure Cosmos DB, you can manually vectorize and store any size of the data, even 500, 600, 800 doc uh, page documents also you can upload without any issues. But through the web application, through the OpenAI Studio, if you do, there may be a timeout issue because it depends on the, I'm not sure about that, but I have not uploaded very, very large document, but because it's a web UI interface, there can be a timeout uh, problem. So the recommended option is either do it manually using uh, the code, for generating the, the vector data and upload into the vector data. Okay, Ankit, uh, yes, you can build your own custom application which can make request to Azure OpenAI models or your local models. It's you in, even if you use Azure OpenAI models, you are making a request to that particular endpoint. Similarly, if you are invoking the local models, you can make the request to local models also, no problem. So if you are building a chatbot application, you can decide whether the request has to go to Azure OpenAI or it has to invoke through the local models. That's possible. OK, any other questions? Okay, so uh, RG, are you there in the call? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, I have done with this session. So now if you want to do any post session activities, you can continue. Uh, hello guys, I shared the feedback form. Please, uh, before leaving the session, make sure you fill this feedback form.
Guys, don't forget to fill this feedback form before leaving the session.